where the for reflection is given by for an anisotropic element. This reflection is a reflection of the, all those things with respect to the orthogonal space of this space generated by this. So it simply maps all those x's to x minus this one. So it actually maps v to minus v and fixes the orthogonal complement of this given v. that at least I could introduce a quaternion algebra. And up to here, let us define a field to be a characteristic not equal to 2, because if you allow this one to be 2, then there has some problem if you want to define a quadratic, if you want to define a quadratic force, which is obtained from this quaternion algebras. And let's say the quaternion algebra A over F is basically a four dimensional and F vector space with basis vectors one i, j, k, where one is just an identity and i satisfies that square is a, j square is b, i, j is minus j, i is k for some a, b in f star and this is usually denoted by a, b over f. This is a, one of those Hilbert symbols that the in fact, there is another Hilbert symbol for the any pair of AB, but let me just use this notation to denote the quaternion algebra. And the symbol is not determined uniquely for any quaternion algebra, as we can choose a different basis that uh, you can take on like AI, then this A is squared. You, you have some square factor there, or if you just switch the orders, then this AB and like uh, a, B, and minus A, B, in fact, they, their order will be all switched, so this is, this, the, this does not, actually, there's not only one sign for a given quaternion algebra, but just, it's a good symbol to denote. So actually, you should think of that one as uh, some unit, some, some equivalence relation among those Hilbert symbols. That's just one thing you should be careful. And uh, the typical example, Hamilton quaternions, which is given in this A over R. Or our matrix based two by two matrix. It is also one of those quaternion algebras. And in this case, i is given to be 1, 0, 0, minus 1. j is given to be 0, 1, 1, 0. Then you see the square of them all becomes an identity. So I'm omitting those identity. Like a, they are all elements in here. It doesn't matter. And uh, there are several properties. As I said, that this AB can be changed if you just change the basis. Actually, if you just put any kind of square to here, then they you can easily give a nice work with between these two for any AB, XY, and F star. And the center 
if I put this one to be A, then the center of this one <coughs> is a collection of the elements which makes everything comment. And the only possible axes are just a field itself. And the third one is a, this is first, this is second. And the third one is that this one should be a simple algebra. Which means that we have no proper two-sided ideals. Yes, they are algebras, they are rings, and one can think of ideals, but no proper two-sided one. And from these two properties, actually, our any quaternion algebra A is a central simple algebra. And uh, in fact, what is true is that any central simple algebra of dimension four is a quaternion algebra. So one can use the results from the central simple algebra to actually kind of describe them. Now the Just some more definitions. If A is once written in this Hilbert symbol, then the, you are given these fixed bases. Then they are called to be a standard basis. And just like a pure imaginary number, one can think of a pure quaternion in here which is a subspace spanned by IJK. Then this is called a Algebra, but they are a sub vector space, and uh, this is independent of the choice of a basis, standard basis. Now, so actually, I want to, I wanted to state those like a weather run structure theorem or. Well, for another theorem, but let me just state those results, well, application of those results. Then actually, well, let me continue with this one first. That if, if we define this pure quaternion, then any element in A is represented uniquely as a direct sum of elements in the center and elements in uh, pure quaternions. And, uh, so one can define a conjugate. If x is written in this form, then the conjugate is written in a minus alpha. So it's just a generalization of a conjugate of a complex numbers. And then like a, just like a original conjugate, this kind of property is all satisfied. It's just this one should be, be careful that the, if you take a bar, then as it is not a commutative algebra, the order is switched. And this is true and for any element in the center. The bar doesn't affect at all. And then actually the in 
in this 2 by 2 matrix, if you are given A, B, C, D, and if you take a conjugate here, then you get an inverse matrix. Kind of an inverse matrix. And And also one can define a reduced norm and reduced trace. And reduced trace. The product of these two and trace is the sum of these two. And uh, now one can define if it's invertible or not. In this invertible, if and only if the norm is non zero and the one can actually find an inverse to be this one. You can see that from this example clearly. And uh, A star, as usual, this one denotes a collection of uh, invertible elements. And uh, A1. It is a collection of uh, elements in here whose norm is just fixed to be one. those not good ones and uh, just some properties that uh, as I said like I said every four dimensional central simple algebra over F becomes uh, quaternion algebra So, yeah, by the something called the Wedderburn structure theorem, that this one states that the, all the central simple algebra has a form of a, those matrix form of D, where D is a division algebra. So. So this one, and using the fact that our dimension is only restricted to four, it implies that uh, if our central simple algebra or uh, our quaternion algebra is not isomorphic to this one, then it should be a division algebra, which means that all of the elements in here is invertible. So, in the case of like uh, this one, it corresponds to the isotropic quadratic forms, a quadratic space, and the bottom one corresponds to the unisotropic ones. And uh, but uh, don't think that I can finish everything. But uh, let me just at least state what's the orders. So we want to define something integral, just like we define the ring of integers in a. Uh, number of fields, but uh, the sad thing is that we cannot just collect all those something called integrals. Instead, we need something just uh, kind of a smaller than that. So now, let us now focus on the number field case. Uh, and let our is a dedicated domain which has our k as a fractional field. And in fact, for any vector space, 
over K, the R lattice is just a finitely generated R module in V, and it is said to be complete if L is a finitely generated R module and L tensor K becomes the whole thing, so it means that this lattice is kind of big enough. And uh, now, as if you, if you just put this V to be our algebra A, and any element in here is an integer, really depends on the our choice of this swing of integers. So, if all this is an integer, if the this subring subalgebra in A is R lattice. So it doesn't become so dense to actually have an infinitely many generators. And then the idea is a complete R lattice in here. And an order is an idea. Usually we use O, which is also a ring with unity. And this order is maximal if it is maximal, yeah? So that it is not contained in any other bigger order than it is called the maximal. So it's maximal with respect to the to the inclusion. So just note that there can be many maximal orders instead of just one unique maximum or verse like a ring of integer cases. And oh. and uh, let me just give some special case example like uh, for example if A was of this form then one can see why the collection of all those integers doesn't become this kind of ordered thing because if we choose alpha to be j and beta to be something like 3j plus 4ij or 4k, whatever you write, then you see that either the product of these two or uh, some of these two doesn't become an integer at all. even though they are integers. Yeah. Let me just state on special cases that the if A is in this case, but the, and if R is a principal idea or domain, just there's still something good about these maximal orders that they are all conjugate to each other. Then maximal In fact this is not the good enough case but the being conjugate well. So this means actually, if you just localize everything onto like this pre-valuation ring, then uh, we, if it has this form, then all those maximal ideas, maximal orders, there's only one maximal order in that case. And uh, in fact, there's only two cases in the choice of uh, you say that this one or uh, um, just uh, one unique division algebra, then the other one is actually this order is fixed, but uh, 
Sing, let me. I should stop here. Okay.